Welcome to the Pro Wrestling Report Primetime. Come to you here from Baby Steak and Lemonade, Lemonade. in uh, Phoenix, Arizona. Mango. This mango is good. Now, uh, they also have strawberry and all kinds of other matter, exciting stuff. Damian Nelson sitting here alongside David Hero, and we are coming to you from under the Phoenix sun. And uh, it's time to talk WrestleMania, David. Welcome to town. Finally made it. You showed up. Oh, I showed up. You were late. I was, uh, I was here about a day and a half before you. Well, I wasn't in the contract. Oh, oh, that part, that part. Yes. Well, anyways, the cause is, uh, he has totally ditched us. His girlfriend's in town. <laughs> He's blaming it on the a a a a a alcohol. Um, but anyways, we are going to talk about WrestleMania 26, which is this Sunday on pay-per-view. And uh, we're going to talk about it match by match, David, and give our predictions as to who may come out on top of the biggest show of the year from My WWE. Yes, your predictions. All right. Which ought to go. be good. They're going to be right. The first match we're going to talk about is a match that has become a WrestleMania staple, and that is the Money in the Bank ladder match. This year, with the most participants ever, a total of 10 participants in this matchup. And let's run down the list. David, pay, pay attention closely. Christian, Dolph Ziggler, Kane, Shelton Benjamin, Jack Swagger, MVP, Matt Hardy, Evan Bourne, Drew McIntyre, the current Intercontinental Champion, and Kofi Kingston, who I just got added. They, they, they obviously forgot about the guy. And they're like, hey, we need a match for Kofi. Let's put him somewhere. So who do you think walks out of this year's Money in the Bank with a championship opportunity in the next 12 months? You've got a former ECW champion, several of them. You've got former Intercontinental and United States champions, some uh, names who we've seen in the match before, and some that are new to the concept. Well, right now there's only one person that the fans really want to see win, besides Evan Bourne, obviously, is uh, Christian. His one, his one and a half year punishment by Vince McMahon is over. You're still on that, he huh? He served his time in ECW, and uh, look for Christian to come out and challenge Jericho or Edge. And last year, a lot of people said it would be Christian's match, and that would not be the case. A CM Punk he won it for the second punished. year in a row. He was being punished. This is a, it's a different year. All right. Well, you pick Christian. Uh, you know, this one's difficult. Again, there's 10 people in it. There's several ways they can go. It's going to be an exciting match, but David, is there train wreck possibility? given the number of performers in this matchup. There's way too many guys in one match. Way too many ladders. And it'll be interesting because it's a PG show now. Yes. How many high spots is, are they going to do with all the ladders? It's a great question. And we'll find out Sunday at WrestleMania. I would go with Christian, too, just because that's easy. Why not? It's the winner. <laughs> Chicken dinner. Uh, another matchup, it's a grudge match, and this one, you know, was one that you talked about for a very long time that would happen, however, under different circumstances. This Sunday night at WrestleMania, it is Triple H versus Sheamus, two former champions going head-to-head -head in what can only be called a bit of a grudge match. A match that I thought was going to be great with a lot of huge buildup, but the past few weeks, Sheamus really has disappeared. You haven't seen anything of them. They turned the lights up a little. Well, they did do that. But I mean, I really thought it was good. They'd build it into a grudge match, a big fight, two big strong guys beating each other up. And I just think it's going to be a pretty easy win for Triple H. As easy as his win over John Cena at WrestleMania 22? When we take the good guys episode of, of WrestleMania uh, a couple of days ago with Frank, we talked about how great Triple H was at WrestleMania 22 when he had that match with John Cena that he ultimately ended up tapping out to Cena in and how he pretty much said it was going to be the easiest match of his night. No, of it will life. be because they're going to send Sheamus to SmackDown. So he has to get defeated for that to happen? Absolutely. <laughs> Triple H will send him packing and going to SmackDown. Hmm. Okay. And what benefit are the you, Smack... Are you making notes? With all I this? am making notes. I'm making mental notes and I'm... I'm do you because see these Monday, check marks? I'm checking them down. Monday night when we go over the winners and losers and we see how many I got right, it's going to be amazing. See, he's right about a couple things here and there, and all of a sudden what have it I been becomes. Wrong on? Exactly. It is a three-way contest, David. Legacy explodes. Randy Orton versus Ted DiBiase versus Cody Rhodes. This is not even. I feel bad for Randy Orton. This is this isn't. It even... went from the main event last year. He's barely in the top six match right now. I mean, this match is meaningless. The only only way this match means anything is if Ted or Cody win. And you really can't see that happening. Well, you could, 
if Legacy works as a team against Randy Orton. But why would they? And is it Ted or Cody? If one of them were to win, yeah. which one should it be? It'll be Ted. He's the bigger star of the two. Of those two, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's unique. And, and, and we were talking about Randy Orton a couple days ago. Just a couple years ago, I believe WrestleMania 23, he was in the Money in the Bank match. And while that's not a bad place to be, he went to the top of the card the next couple years at WrestleMania. Now he's sort of in this match, which seemed to, I mean, it's had good build, but I don't know if the fans are invested enough in it to really care as much as they could about it. Well, you know, and I guess that shows you just how strong of a card it really is. It may not be the matches we want to see, mm -hmm. but they have all the big names and all the big matches. Right. You know, there's really no match that, you know, you can question who belongs there. They filled out pretty, it's actually so you, filled out fairly well. Cody belongs. Yeah, because <laughs> Randy Orton's going to fight two guys and might as well be Legacy. All righty. Well, uh, you didn't really pick a winner. You, DiBiase you're going with? If it's one of the two, you're saying it's DiBiase, but it's going to be I Orton. Would, I would hope to see Randy Orton win, but if it's one of the two, it'll be DiBiase. All right. Ray There's no way I would ever take Cody Rhodes to win. <laughs> ever. Anytime. Ever, ever. ever. Uh, it will be Ray Mysterio versus CM Punk. If Ray Mysterio loses, he must join the Straight Edge Society along with CM Punk. I think, I, I think CM Punk wins. I think they bring in Ray Mysterio for a little while, have, a, have them battle each other internally until SummerSlam, and have the big blow-off match there. If CM Punk loses again, the, the, the straight loses society, again. <laughs> again, well, because he has yet to win a big match since he beat Jeff Hardy, you know, at SummerSlam, since he formed the Straight Edge Society. Yeah. Well, but he is a two-time Money in the Bank winner, which doesn't I think is matter something. anymore. Okay. It's a whole brand new year. All right. It's it's just I'm telling you, he, CM Punk goes over. I would have to say that it makes sense for that scenario to occur, but Rey Mysterio, I mean, the fans are wanting to see Ray Ray walk out with a win at WrestleMania. Of the last three or four WrestleManias, he's missed two of them okay. due to injury. They're still going to cheer for Rey Mysterio. Didn't have a if, match last year. If he year, wins really. or loses, they'll still cheer for him. Imagine how much heat will be on CM Punk when he beats him. And, then and, has and to, you know he's not going to beat him clean. Is carrying him around in his bags? Because, you know, he could carry it. Sure. He could do that. Uh-huh. So you got, you got CM Punk, Rey Mysterio, Luke Gallows, and Serena. I think it's perfect. It is certainly that other dimension to that group that would be entertaining over on the SmackDown side of things for sure. It is the Tag Team Championship, the Unified Tag Team Championships, as the Big Show and The Miz take on John Morrison and R-Truth. I still don't get that team. I've been trying to find it, trying to figure it out. I still don't get it. You know, if they needed to have a tag team title match, have it a four-way. Have Miz Fatal and Show, have the Hart Dynasty, throw in Crime Time, and then you can throw in R-Truth and mm -hmm. uh, John Morrison. I just, this is the one match that if I miss it, I, I won't be upset about it. I think the winner is clear in this match. Oh, absolutely. The Miz Show. And that makes sense, and I think it should. They've got momentum. They've got momentum, but is this what Big Show's career now in WWE is is, is turning into, where he's going to be a yeah. tag team specialist, because if you will? Because his career is going to last the next two or three years now. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Um, the match that is 13 years in the making. Vince McMahon versus Bret Hart. It's a bit of a street fight, I guess. No holds barred, no disqualification. Isn't that amazing that they would book a match like that? Well, back in August of last year. It was August, wasn't it? It was August or so of last year, and you said Eight Bret Hart ago? would be performing at WrestleMania. Yes, David, you may have been somewhat accurate in that assessment. Yeah. And how much heat did I get for that? <laughs> right? Not as much heat as you've gotten for the most recent thing you've done. And you know what? I still stand by that. That's fine. That's fine. That's that, all we're going to say. I don't want you to walk show. off. That's a different show. We can talk about that in a couple weeks. All right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, I mean, for Bret Hart, this is a great spot for him. Win-win. Going to get a huge payday. 
gets his father inducted in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. Hopefully, uh, you know, the Hart Dynasty gets a rub from it somehow. That's the piece that I still just don't get. I don't understand how you can have uh, the Hart Dynasty obviously being pushed as part of the Bret Hart legacy, if you will, and not even be even remotely involved in this situation. It not just, even an interview or, or anything. It's almost like they're, they're purposely, deliberately being ignored in this situation, and th that just, it baffles me. But what would it, I mean, maybe it, it's a lack of opportunities for things to do um, in their mind with them. Well, I'm willing to bet that down the road, things are gonna change with the Hart Dynasty because they are talented, they are young. Maybe the powers that be don't think they're ready yet. Yeah. But oh. <laughs> and Seamus was? Seamus is, it's a different story with Seamus. You know, he had a different look. You know, he was the heel, yeah. Triple H's buddy. It's politics. Yeah. You ask anyone on this, on this card right here. This one? Yeah, what is the number one thing about wrestling? It's the politics. You can be as talented as you want. It doesn't mean that you're going to get the push you deserve. Yeah. This match, uh, you know, it, it, it's almost, you shouldn't really call it a match because it's just going to be a fight. Oh. And, and if you look back at some of Vince McMahon's battles at WrestleMania, whether it be with Hulk Hogan, whether it be with Shawn Michaels, I believe it was a couple of years ago, uh, he always delivers an entertaining segment, if nothing Vince else. Vince McMahon. <clears throat> has worked with pretty much every top name in the business. Yeah. Hogan, Flair, Taker, Triple H, Shawn Michaels, now Bret Hart. There's nobody left. Yeah. He's done it all. And he always puts them over in the best that he can. He, he's never, I don't think, believe he's ever won a match at Mania. Well, he, he wins every Mania. He gets the big check at the end. <laughs> that's indeed, that's the true. The million dollar pay-per-view buys at 50 bucks a crack. 55 now. Yeah. 65 if it's an HD. Speaking of which, a lot of people have talked about the change in pricing for WWE pay-per-views, which, which kicked in. Uh, Babies is hopping, look at that. Um, which kicked in uh, back in January. Royal Rumble actually saw a increase. Have you tried increase. Yet? Mango is my favorite. Amazing. Uh, actually saw an increase after the rate went up. So it doesn't, I guess it doesn't matter to wrestling fans. They can keep raising the price. The they, product is there and they want it. Everyone's going to get WrestleMania. If they get one a year, it's always WrestleMania. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's the big one. Uh, but that matchup, who is there a winner? Is there a loser? Well, they both win financially, but Bret Hart <laughs> leaves as the winner. Okay. Mm -hmm. Makes sense in that contest. And now we talk about the biggest matches on the card. And there are, I think, three or four main events this year at WrestleMania. Uh, two of them for championship belts, one for a career versus a streak. <laughs> and the other one being McMahon Hart that we just talked about. Let's first talk about that matchup between The Undertaker and the Heartbreak Kid, Shawn Michaels. Shawn Michaels, who recently said he is just about ready to call it quits in the business, is going to be putting his career on the line against the streak of The Undertaker, 17 and 0, 17 years. The Undertaker has gone into WrestleMania and come out the victor, just like he did last year against Shawn Michaels this year. What are we gonna see, Dave Hero? It's going to be the exact same thing. There's no way The Undertaker loses to Shawn Michaels. No way. No way. Think about it. Shawn Michaels retired Ric Flair. Yep. That's a big honor. Huge He's deal. He's not going to end the streak. It's time now that Shawn Michaels does business the right way and returns the favor to somebody else and lets somebody else now retire him. You're saying that like he won't. Oh, he will do it. And if there's anybody, I think it would be. Probably The Undertaker, because maybe Triple H. he has the most respect for The Undertaker. They've Just had great matches so. together. Oh, yeah. For going back, gosh, well, you to can the mid-90s for well, sure. But even when they did the Royal Rumble a couple years ago when they were the last two guys in the ring together, yeah. how great that was. Absolutely, absolutely. It's going to be know, a great match. And a lot of people are saying, how can they top it? How will they top it? What can they do different from last year? And I don't think the goal is to do anything different. I think they're going to go out there and put on a tremendous wrestling exhibition and at the end of the match, much like last year, us as fans will leave satisfied. There's going to be uh, sweet chin music. There's going to be choke slams. There were three there's of each be, last year, I believe. There's going to be at least that many this time, you know, because they're going to they're they're going to make it so that that match is impossible to follow. That John Cena and Batista and Edge and Christian won't know what to do to top that match. 
Do you think, though, that this match may end up being the actual top headlining matchup on the card? It's one of the headlining main events. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, that, one of the headlining main events. Yeah, that, but that but that's going to be left for uh, John Cena and Batista, because Vinnie Mac wants to make sure that the WWE title right. is the number one title yeah. match. Yep. Um, you know that one. I I would have to say that it makes the most sense for the Undertaker to win. I would agree with you, David Hero. That Shawn Michaels does not win that matchup. You're what do you think? A thousand right now. Then. You what do you think of his recent comments, though? Shawn Michaels saying in an interview publicly, he's ready to hang it up. He's just about done. I mean, Batista did it about a year ago, and clearly he's not retiring. He said he was only going to stay in the business for another year. So you have to take all these things with a grain of salt. But what are your thoughts on him saying this in a public forum just days before a career-ending match? Shawn Michaels matchup? is not going to lie. Right. Oh, well, he's. You know very affiliated. He won't lie, so what he's saying is the truth. He's done. He's been wanting to be done for a long time. Well, remember when he came back in 2002, uh, it was supposed to be a, a, a brief return. He never planned on, I mean, that was eight years ago when Shawn Michaels returned. He's been going at it for he's eight years of without money. taking now many breaks. He wants breaks. to watch his kids grow up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right, well, let's you talk know, about... You know, you know what the whole shame is, though, the whole thing? Seamus? Is that on his way out, he's not elevating anybody. Who did he elevate the entire eight years he's been back? Hornswoggle. Okay, I'll give you Hornswoggle. Right. <laughs> what the DX thing? Who did he elevate? Who did he make a better a, a better wrestler? Well, you're talking over a compressed period of time in the last few months. You could probably say Randy Orton. Yeah. But that would be about it. So one person in eight years. It's pretty selfish. Wow. All right. Well. <laughs> well, think about it. No, I, I, that's why I, I can't. I can't dispute that because I can't come up with any names that he actually has. I'm sure they will out there in the population, if you will. But. Absolutely, they will. Uh, the World Heavyweight Championship. This is a match I said that I did not expect to see on a WrestleMania, and uh, now I am very intrigued by it. It is the man who is the best in the world at what he does, whatever that may be, against Edge. That's tweeting for the World Heavyweight Championship. Jericho versus Edge at Mania for the I, championship. I love Chris Jericho to beat Edge. I think I think that if Edge doesn't have the best of records at WrestleMania. Well, it's not that. It's just no one's been better on his game lately than Chris Jericho, and he should be rewarded with that with a win at WrestleMania. Edge can he does the deserve next it. month or the month yeah. after. Yeah, he does deserve it. Does deserve mm -hmm. it. And many would say that he's having his best run in his career, Chris Jericho, at this time. He's even said that in many interviews. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, definitely it'll be a great match. There'll be a lot of uh, false finishes, a lot of drama and whatnot. But at the end of the night, Chris Jericho leaves as the champion. The WWE Championship. Oh, oh. Who do you think is going to win? I, said, I, I thought I said Jericho. My apologies. Okay. I, I'll just go with the Y2J. Sure. All right, just checking. I was going to heen in that one. <laughs> Uh, the WWE. Who, who is in Phoenix? Bobby the Brain Heenan. Who isn't in Phoenix, really? Meathead. He's not. <laughs> really? I didn't notice. <laughs> is he not here? Well, that wasn't him in the backseat last night. <laughs> um, it is the WWE Championship. John Cena versus Batista. Batista, we talked about Jericho being just about as good as he's ever been. I am loving every minute of this heel Batista. It's all going to come to an end, though, on, on Sunday night. He loses to John. He John Cena deserves John a win. Cena. In the storyline arc, if you will, I guess, he deserves hey, this win. John Cena has gotten beaten down every week for the past month by Batista. There was that off-camera thing between him and I as well. Oh, absolutely. He lost that. He did. He really did. And, uh, you know, everyone's going to, not everyone, 85% of the fans are going to go home happy Sunday night with John Cena and his music blaring and... You know, the whole you can't see me and right. his cinemation. If that's the last match. It is the last match. Vegas has it booked that way. <laughs> the odds? Mm -hmm. we got to drive up there. It's only four hours. <laughs> it's worth well, the drive. The way you drive, it'd probably be seven. All right. 350 miles in 36 hours I've driven. That's why the car's You're welcome, your pal. <laughs> uh, Rashi, 
Rossi Brown's going to join us for the taping, it looks like, tomorrow night. We're going to the know, ROH right? show in just a few minutes, the Ring of Honor show, to see Skull Crusher Rashi Brown perform. And uh, he's going to try to make it down here to Baby Steak and Lemonade tomorrow. And Dave, you had your first meal here at Baby's today. I, I had the Armando. The, the Armando. And I had my third day of the Philly cheesesteak. It was just you can't beat it. Butter, garlic, fries, buffalo fries. There is, you the get fans down have here. been coming through here uh, throughout the entire weekend, and Baby Steak and Lemonade is the place to be for all the action, really, this weekend during WrestleMania. And, and hot just news. I mean, tremendous right now, food. You got MVP is having MVP uh, is having a meal right inside. Uh, right inside. Uh, the former WCW demon, Dale yep. Korborg, is in there. Beth Phoenix here earlier. Beth Phoenix earlier. Undertaker was here yesterday, earlier. It's the place to be, and uh, you can look it up at babysteakandlemonade.com. Well, the lights are leaving us, and it is time for us to head on down to the Ring of Honor show. So we will be back with you again tomorrow with a special edition of the Pro Wrestling Report. It's interactive. Lots of fan footage from here at Baby Steak and Lemonade and our shenanigans throughout Phoenix over the course of the last few days. You can see that just before WrestleMania 26 goes on air tomorrow at pwrshow.com. David Hero? David Hero. It's time to break. Let's get out of here. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you again soon.